start recording. Um, oh, for everyone, this call is going to be recorded so that others can uh, listen to it in the future. So just a heads up on that. Um, yeah, so for the first part of the call, it will be the new performance measures. And then the second part of the call, feel free to stay on or leave. Um, and that will focus on how to continue to track the old measures. So I don't know if everyone was here last fall when we were talking about the performance measures, but we did a survey of the WIC coordinators and a lot of people weren't using them. Um, we had about 10 and I think that, it, you know, mostly it was the larger agencies that were using them, but we really wanted to create measures that were useful and actionable um, and that people would really engage with. Um, of the old measures, it says current, but those are of the old measures. Seven out of nine are already available in Twist. So again, we'll talk about that later and how to access those. But if we if they're already available, maybe we should um, give you guys some data that you don't have access to. So again, the work group liked the idea of more actionable information. And I want to give a shout out to the work group who were amazing. We've had monthly calls. Um, Lynetta and Dale from Salud. Debbie from Jackson, Ricky from Multnomah, Laura from Deschutes, Marianne from Umantella Mora Head Start, and then Tiari and Jolene from the state. So these were the measures that the group decided on. They wanted to mainly focus on pregnant women. So looking at the percent of pregnant women with Medicaid who participate in WIC and the number. And that's, you know, if that's really a our target population, all of those women are eligible and hopefully we're doing a really good job reaching them and serving them. And then the second one was trimester of enrollment and people were really interested in digging in a little bit more and seeing that at the clinic level. And then the third thing that we wanted to look at was show rates um, because that's part of that actionable information, you know, something that you can do. All right reading the charts. So I'm curious, we'll do a little poll here for a minute. Um, I'm actually, let's see. So I'm curious how many of you were able to download the Tableau Reader. All right, so go ahead and let me know if you were able to download it. Oh, good. All right, so it looks like most people, about 90% were able to download it, so that's great. Oh, here. All right. So here is Tableau Reader. Um, I think that that image is hilarious. And if you go to their website and you downloaded it, maybe you saw he's, he's really into what he's seeing in the coffee shop uh, with his Tableau Reader. So why Tableau? Why are we using this tool? Um, the idea is to make it a little bit more fun, more interactive, and more visual. Um, and I think Tableau does a good job of that. Um, it also kind of minimizes the manual steps on my side, so that's really helpful for me. It's all about me. Um, a couple notes about this. So these are designed for internal use by WIC staff. Um, so you can save the workbooks in one of your folders, and then I'll show you how to, you can share the information as a picture or a PDF. Um, you don't need to send the whole workbook. Um, these are, things are 
de-identified and aggregated, but it still might have some small numbers if you send that workbook to people. So just keep it for yourself and then I'll show you again how, if you wanna share the visuals and the information with others, partners or administrators, um, you can definitely do that. What to expect? So we're gonna look at data for your agency and by clinic. We wanted to be able to compare to the state average, look at trends, and then to be able to hover over something for more information. And we'll do a lot of that. It's like back to the future. You guys are going to practice on your hoverboards. All right, so this is a picture of the dashboard. And kind of like a dashboard, on your car. It's something that you can quickly look at and understand um, without having to put a whole lot of thought and energy into it. So I wanted to kind of train you today so that you'll be up to speed and you can easily and quickly use the dashboard. There are four different parts. So number one is the reach. You know, are we reaching pregnant women on Medicaid, what percentage of those women are joining WIC. And that data comes from vital statistics and the birth certificate. The rest of the data is all based on the data that you enter into TWIST. Um, so number two is the new pregnant appointments. So that gives us information about how many new pregnant women are coming and it breaks it down by those that didn't show up, those that did show up, and walk-ins. And number three is the timing. So are we, when are we reaching women? Are they coming in during their first trimester? And this shows you over time uh, the percent that are enrolling in that first trimester. And then the last thing is, it's 3B, is by clinic. It's the first trimester enrollment. So the first thing to note is that when you click all, hold on just a minute. Okay, sorry everyone, I, I was notified that you might be getting some feedback. And there's a little bit of uh, construction here, so like Mary just said, it might be a flashback to the dental office. <clears throat> uh, okay, so important, choose only one county and one agency. And this county, this is tied to this one because it's the birth certificate data and then the agency is tied to the other ones. But it's gonna look horribly wrong if you try to select all. There, that's better. Okay, so this is just one. And I, I included Salute because they were on the work group, so I felt like they would be okay with that. Um, so the dashboard, there are some tabs on the bottom and you can click on them. They have the same information, but it's each, the tabs are sort of the parts for the dashboard. So the dashboard is the whole. And we'll go through the tabs so that you guys can see. Um, it's a little bit easier to focus on one at a time. All right, so the first one, this one has data that comes from the birth certificate. And it lets us see the larger picture of how we're doing among, among pregnant women with Medicaid insurance or OHP. And when women are filling out the birth certificate after they had the baby, they're asked if they were in WIC for one or more months during pregnancy. 
So again, all of these women are eligible. 100% may not be realistic, but that that's the highest. Um, we could be reaching 100%, I guess, in a perfect world. So for this chart, you'll see the year at the top. And then at the bottom, you see the months. Um, it's in semester chunks. So it's the first half of the year or the second half of the year. And just a for your information, uh, across the state, or on average for Oregon, it's, it's been decreasing. So that's another reason that we're really interested in looking at this as a performance measure. Well, I should say that's another reason the work group is really interested. All right, there are two parts to this chart. And we'll go step by step because I know there's a lot of information on here. The gray bars show the percent of women, so on the left, the leftmost gray bar that says 77. That means that 77% of women that had births between January and June of 2016 were enrolled in WIC. And then, you know, from the next bar, from July to December, women that had births in those months that were paid for by Medicaid. 76% of those women were enrolled in WIC. So and that's the gray bars. And then if you look at the blue line, that tells us how many Medicaid births there were. So each one of those things is part of this story. And in terms of caseload, it really matters how many women are coming to WIC. Um, and so that's what that blue, well, the blue line can tell you the number of overall Medicaid women, who, whether they're in WIC or not in WIC. Um, so that's that number that we're going for. But it's important for you to know in your area, are those births increasing over time? And maybe there are, are more people coming to the area, or are those births decreasing over time? Maybe the population is changing in your area. So again, we want to know what percent of women we're reaching and how it changes over time. But that's only part of the story. So maybe in your area, a lot of people are moving out of the county, and there are fewer and fewer births. I like this graphic. At first, I thought the woman was flipping a finger out the window, but it's really just a cell phone. And that cooler, that's full of good things like milk and water. Uh, so. So those two parts are really important. If a lot of people are moving out of the county, you might see your percentage getting higher and higher, that you're doing better and better with those Medicaid women, but you also really need to know if that number is going down because that's important for caseload. A lot of the stuff um, on the dashboard is really relevant to caseload and can help you. So for this example, or if we, if we look at an actual example, this is one agency, it looks like the reach or the percent of Medicaid pregnancies in WIC is slowly climbing up. Um, well, yeah, the percent of Medicaid might be increasing, but then the overall number could be decreasing. And keep in mind that See how the blue lines look like they're going down? So if you look at 2016, it looks like it starts pretty high in January to June, and then it goes down July to December. So that might be a seasonal variation with births, and it will kind of get used to that as we look at more and more of this data over time. So you really want to pay attention to what's happening across years and if it's consistent over multiple years. So again, look for the big picture so that, um, because it, yeah, there might be seasonal variation. So the performance measure work group felt that it was important to have data every six months instead of every year. And for many agencies, especially the smaller ones, there's a lot more variation in six months than in a year. And the data may jump around a bit. So you can still look for the yearly average by hovering. Um, so if you can see there's like a faint gray 
bar in the background and if you put your cursor right on that bar then it will tell you the average for your local agency and if you put your cursor right on that orange line that will tell you the average for the state so here's an example the chart on the left is showing when I hover my mouse or my cursor right on that orange line and it'll pop up and show me for 2017 64% of Medicaid births were on WIC across Oregon and then for this agency in 2017 the yearly average was 76% so that can be really helpful if your data does jump around a little bit you might want to pay more attention from year to year so as we're starting this process I wanted to give you a kind of a heads up that in the past when I've run the data I've waited a few months for all the birth certificates to kind of filter in uh, into vital statistics and this time because we're trying to have these be a little bit more timely and responsive um, we're pulling it I'm pulling it pretty immediately after the cutoff so for example for the January to June data I'm gonna pull it at the beginning of July so it's not going to be a hundred percent complete so 2016 and 2017 the data is older and it had time to sort of become more complete and finalized the newer data in 2018 is not yet finalized and it still may be changing a little bit and we looked at it and how much it changes over a few months and it's still pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and use that but going forward it will be more consistent uh, because we'll be pulling it at the exact same time frame each time all right yay we finished the first one so let's talk about the second chart it is the, the colorful one it's not my favorite but it just happens to be colorful um, the blue axis on the well let's go there we go the blue axis on the left shows the number of new pregnant appointments again we're sort of focusing in on the world of pregnant women and the colors show whether these women whether these were no-show appointments show appointments or walk-ins and the data go back a year and a half so you can see what happened in the same month during the previous year so if we look oh in June is um, I don't think it's complete yet so again this is part of that sort of provisional stuff that's happening so it I'll send an updated file uh, before OICA so for May you can look at 518 which is sort of on the right hand side and this data is monthly so that's May and then you can look and see how May of the previous year looked um, for this particular agency they have a lot of walk-in appointments and if you hover over you guys will do a lot of practicing here uh, if you hover over a particular area on the chart it will give you more detail so in December of 2017 there were eight participants who made eight walk-in appointments and that was 14 percent of all of the new pregnant appointments for that month so again this agency has a lot of walk-ins so here's a different agency that tells a little bit of a different story and we can see a lot of variation from month to month these valleys are really great to pay attention to because those are months where there were fewer new pregnant appointments and then the peaks are also really important because that's where the most new pregnant women were coming in and making appointments so it's really good to take a moment and think you know what was happening in those months where there were the peaks and what was happening in those valleys maybe statewide meeting for this one in May or maybe you were doing something different in a month um, maybe you had a really big outreach event and so you'll want to see and pay attention you know what what was the effect uh, did it bring in a lot of new pregnant women and so that will be helpful to track going forward 
Becky? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, can you remind me how to read uh, this graphic? So for 417, for example, I see the red, the pink, um, just above uh, 30. Does that mean 30%, uh, like 35% of uh, people showed up and then 55% didn't show up? So uh, thank you, Jamila. That is an awesome question. And everyone, I should have said this, feel free to, um, you can chat or go ahead and just unmute yourself if you have a question, because I'm sure it will be valuable for everyone. So on the, that axis that you see on the right side, the numbers from zero to, or on the left side, the numbers from zero to 70, that's the number of appointments. So it's, the hovering gives you a little bit more detail whether, so you can hover over the pink area and you'll see, it'll tell you the percent that were, that showed up in that particular month. And you hover over the orange area and it will show you the percent that did not show up. So the show rates are kind of, in, those are part of the hovering detail. You'll get that detail when you hover. But this just tells you kind of the volume of appointments um, and that's kind of what the, the colors and the peaks and valley are telling you, is when did you have the most pregnant, new pregnant appointments, whether or not they were no-shows or shows or walk-ins. So the no-shows are on the top, so those, you know, this is telling the story of appointments. So if you just want to think about who were the people that came in, then kind of ignore that orange line. But there, but the no-show in in color, that orange layer is so important because that also tells us, you know, when did we have the most no-show appointments over time? Jamila, does that answer the question? I think so. Thank you. You think so? Okay. So, again, this number on, let's go back. This tells us how many appointments were made, how many new pregnant appointments for each month. And so if you pay attention to this pink line and the pink area, that's how many showed up. So those people are on WIC or in WIC. And then the no-shows are people that may not be enrolled in WIC, but maybe they're making an appointment this month. And again, if you hover with your cursor over different areas, it's going to give you more detail about the pop, the group of walk-ins or the group of showed or completed appointments or the group of no-shows. Are there any other questions about that or this chart? Okay, so Now we'll move on to the bottom set of charts. The, the first trimester enrollment in WIC. And these are really similar to the first set of charts that we went, the first chart that we went over, the reach of pregnant women. It's set up with the bars and you see the percent and then there's also the state average and the local agency average. So this one is showing quarterly data. And so we'll take the first gray bar, for example. In the third quarter of 2016, 40% of women at this agency enrolled in their first trimester. And the state average, let's see. Oh, I didn't have it here. Um, it looks like the state average for that year was a little bit higher. Uh, maybe like 44%. Um, and then the local agency average for that year was a little, somewhere between 40 and 48. So, so maybe the local agency average is 44 and the state average is 45. So we want, we don't just want to know whether women are joining WIC, we want to know when they're joining. And that's really important information. 
if they enroll earlier, number one, it helps caseload. But number two, the workbook, the work group felt that we really have a larger influence on women when they come in earlier. We have a larger influence nutritionally, and then we can also provide that needed support in WIC. So you can see the yearly average to look at the yard to look at larger trends, and then quarterly data shows you some more details. So again, you can hover over that gray background, and if you put your cursor right up, sometimes it's a little tricky because you'll pop up and you'll see some more detail on the gray bar, but if you get right on that gray line, you'll see the average, the yearly average for the local agency. So, might be a little bit finicky. So now, the last part of the dashboard is the clinic. And I know that for some of the agencies, they felt like, you know, each clinic is so different, and so, you're losing a lot of information when you take the average of the whole agency. And really, maybe one clinic is doing really well with trimester of enrollment, and another um, is struggling a little bit to get women in early. And part of that might have to do with the clinic processes, and part of it might have to do with the participants that are visiting that clinic. And maybe they're just a little bit different. Um, so those are two things that we'll kind of unpack a little bit. And today we're going to talk about how to use and understand the charts. And then at Awika, we're really going to dig in a little bit more. You know, what do you do with this information? So Kim says it works best to hover over the LA box to get the yearly average. Yeah, so you can do it either way. I think I put it in both. You can hover over the box and then you'll see the average. Um, oh. Well, Kim, you might want to say a little bit more about what you mean. Oh, I was just noticing. Can you hear me? Yeah. I was just noticing that it's really hard to hit on my practice piece. It's really hard to get your, your cursor right on that gray line. But that little L.A. box that's over at the side, um, it's really, it's an easier target. Oh, so if you, if you put your cursor on that lighter gray box that says LA. Yes. Then it's easier. Okay, great. It's just an easier target. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's a great tip. Thank you. I love interruptions. Okay. So for this chart, I'm I'm showing Jackson. I mean, it's it's hard to kind of you know, you'll all see the data cuz you can you can choose what, whatever agency you want to look at, but I didn't want to put anyone on the spot. But since Debbie is retiring, I just went ahead and showed Jackson because she she cares less, maybe. She still cares a lot. That I shouldn't have said that. She's She cares so much. We love Debbie. I'm going to stop talking about that now. Okay. So for this graph, we're showing the clinic. So we have Medford, Medford Spanish, and Rogue Family Center. And then you'll see the year, 2018, and the quarter. We have quarters one and two. And if, if you're a smaller agency, it might not show you quarters where you have a very small number of women. And on the one hand, that's too bad because you want to see your data. But on the other hand, it's good because you don't want to be making decisions or conclusions on a very small number of people because it might send you off in the wrong direction or tell you the a story that is maybe not be true. So that's for your benefit as well. So for for Jackson, we can see that the darker bars are quarters and clinics where they were where more of the women were enrolling in the first trimester. And then the lighter bars are showing where fewer women were enrolling in the first trimester. So the the lighter bars are maybe areas that you want to to work on more, and the darker areas are clinics or quarters where you might want to learn more about what, what they're doing and how they're, um, 
how they're getting women in early, if there's anything specific that they're doing. So this one um, I think was quarter two of Medford and 61% of women enrolled in the first trimester. And that was overall, so all the women that enrolled in this quarter, there were 89. So whether or not they enrolled in the first trimester, it was about 90 women. Any questions about this graph or chart? No? Okay. So hopefully this is going to give you information that you can use to look at your agency processes and your clinic processes over time. Um, and there's a lot of information here, and I would love it if you email me um, if you have more questions or there are specific areas that you want to understand more, um, and we can sort of go through it individually. I'm happy to do that. So any other questions about anything on the dashboard? There are also these tabs at the bottom, which I mentioned earlier. The tables um, will be available, and that's just sort of a regular um, text presentation. If you prefer that, you know, it will show you the percent by each agency and the number of women um, for each agency. So if you prefer to look at things in that way or you find that the charts are really um, not helpful for you, then you can definitely go that route and look at those tables instead. All right. Um, I'm really excited again for Awika to dig in and, you know, now that you see what's happening in your local agency and maybe how you compare to the state or how you're doing over time, then the next question, and this is really the key question, is what next? Um, and so that's kind of the meat of this whole thing, is using this data to inform your practices. So we will definitely start working on that going forward um, and through sort of using OWICA as a starting point. So thank you everyone for this first part. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on the next section for those that are interested in tracking the performance measures from last year and that we've been using for the last five years. Um, so before we get to that, are there any other questions or closing thoughts? Feel free to type them into the chat box. Okay. Um, I will share a funny thing since this feels like an appropriate time to share a funny thing. Oh, here we go. Um, there's a question. So on the new pregnant graph, why are the numbers different? Let's go back and take a look. So I think the question is about why this distinct participants is different from the total appointments. So this, the, the data is counting the number of appointments basically. So how many appointments were made and how many appointments were appointments where the women showed up and how many, at how many appointments did they not show up? Which is great information, but we also are really interested in the number of women. Um, and here it shows that there were 15 no-show appointments among 13 different women. So maybe two of those women made a couple of different no-show appointments. So this graph is really in general about appointments, but I wanted to give you that extra information of how many women are we really talking about in that group? How many women, um, you know, are 
were part of that no-show appointment group. Um, and maybe maybe that'll give you information to say, oh, I see that there's you know someone or a few people that are consistently making a few no-show appointments, and then maybe um, it's worth following up with them to see if there's something more that we could do to help them make those appointments. Um, oh, talking about, okay, yeah, so I think that does make sense. All right, great. Um, so now, oh, did someone... you see Connie's question? Yes, did I answer your question, Connie? Connie's oh, question oh, was the how to share the information. Yeah, so let's do that now. So here is the Tableau Reader. We're going live, people. Okay. Uh, do Jackson again. Okay, so if you want to share this information with other people, you can print to PDF. And that will basically take the same thing and put it on paper, um, and you can share it around. Um, or if you want to share, um, maybe you want to share that and give them some numbers for that background data. So you can also share, print out the table or share the table. All right, so hopefully that helps. Those are examples of the table. All right, any other questions? Thank you for those that have submitted questions. And feel again, feel free to email me and just say, I don't get it. Uh, Becky? Yes. Um, you, you saw all the questions, right? Yes, I think so. Okay. Okay, thanks. Unless there's one that I didn't catch. Becky, I did think that it was interesting on the, um, when you're in the practice section, when you hover over on the, by clinic, first trimester enrolled, um, there's a little plus minus box. And when you hit the plus on, I don't know if it does it on all of them, but when you hit the plus, it shows it by month. So yeah. when you, when you show in between, when you hover in between the Q and the bar, the Q1 and the bar, I get a little plus minus, and then oh. it breaks it down by month. Yeah. Great. So an additional level of detail there. Oh. Yeah, so you can play with that and get more or less detail. Thanks, Kim. All right, that's great. It's it's good to have so many eyes on this exploring it because I'm I'm new to this as well. So I really appreciate your questions, Becky. I have one other question that maybe some of the other agencies are wondering about too. Is you mentioned about the select county versus the select WIC agency, mm -hmm. and I know most agencies are by county, so it's it's less of an issue, but um, can you explain more about what the difference is, like when you have somebody like Salud that's over multiple agencies, what changing, I mean, does Salud need to look at two different graphs because they're in two different counties or, because some of the stuff I noticed on mine, Salud, for instance, the by clinic shows up for everything, but the, some of the graphs change depending on what county is selected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's another great question. So the county, we I had to do it differently, and I tried to figure out a way to do this, but this, the birth certificate data is all based on county. So this first graph about the reach of the Medicaid pregnancies in WIC, all of that is recorded at the county level. So if you're like Salud, you would check Yamhill and take a look and see what that looks like, and then you might take a look at Marion and see what that looks like. And I 
it would be nice to be able to tie those things together in the background. And I even talked with some experts at Tableau and they said there's not really a great easy way to do that. Um, so this option hopefully gives you a little bit more information as opposed to less information. Um, you know, if we were to group them all together, this way you can see really your individual counties like Umatillo, Moro, Head Start, um, you know, they are now serving, I think, four or more counties. And so maybe they want that additional detail and information. So the reason that these two are broken out is because birth certificate data is at the county level and we can only see it that way. And then our twist data definitely covers the whole service area for the agency. So, you know, it will cover all of Salud's clients and all of you Matilla Morrow Head Start clients. And then the so clinic, the, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so the only one of these graphs that changes um, based on county is the one about Medicaid. All the other graphs are going to stay static once you pick the, the agency. Correct. Okay. So unless you pick different agencies, just for curiosity or to compare. Like to but, compare Deschutes with Marion? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you can, the graph will change, you know, with each different bar. But yes, these three graphs, the new pregnant appointments, the trimester of enrollment in WIC, and the bi-clinic enrollment, uh, trimester enrollment, are all based on TWIST data, and they're all connected to this box, this drop-down yeah. box. Okay, that's a good clarification. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, I'll share my funny story. Um, so my son is turning two on Thursday and my husband this morning asked him what he would want to eat for dinner which there was no response. And then my husband said, well, what do you like to eat? And my son said, eat strawberries. And then he says, eat puppies, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, we won't be <laughs> eating puppies on Thursday, but just uh, he, those, I guess his strong love for puppies and strawberries is coming through. So for, again, all of you um, that were interested kind of in the measures going forward, thank you so much for participating. And I'm really excited to uh, hang out with you at AWICA. And then for those that want to stay on, we'll talk about if you want to continue tracking the old measures. Um, and, or the, we don't maybe say old, the more experienced measures. Um, this is information on how to do that. So most of the measures that we had before, um, we'll break it down by groups into those measures. We had quarterly measures before, and there were three of those. And then we had um, semi-annual measures uh, like birth weight, hemoglobin, um, overweight and obese, and uh, breastfeeding initiation. So these first three, um, the first one is the du deduplicated count of the number of participants served. And yes, it's available in TWIST. And the report is called WIC Counts by Priority Category. And you can find it in Operations, Ma in Citrix, or in TWIST, in Operations Management, and then you click on Outputs, and then Caseload. And this shows the number of unique participants in your program during a certain time frame. Oh, it looks like I didn't finish this chart. Oh. Okay, well, there's the images are more helpful, so we'll look at those instead. So again, this is unique participants served, and you go into operations management, and then outputs, caseload, and this WIC counts by priority and category. 
and this will tell you how many unique participants were served. And the great thing is you can pick the time frame. So whatever you need for your grant or your annual report or whatever, you can find it here. And you can decide whether it's more important to look at participation or certification. We usually look at participation to look at kind of the active clients. Um, and then I wouldn't check this du count duplicates box. Um, I think that's, I just wouldn't check it. I don't even know what that will get you. But you can also look at it by agency or by clinic. So the next one is show rates. And this is, um, there are multiple reports that you can look at for this. So you go into appointments, this appointment scheduler when you first enter into TWIST, and then output, show rate reports, and then it gives you a lot of different options. You can look at show rate monthly group education or the show rate history, and that kind of breaks it down by IE and group ed, and you can kind of explore the different options here. And again, I think you can choose any time frame for that, which, which can be really helpful if you're looking at something specific. Um, moving on to the, does anyone have any questions about those? Pause. Okay. Um, one note about how when you get it in twist, it's, it is a little bit different um, because there's just, there's just an extra step that I was doing for the performance measures to kind of clean them up and um, take out a little bit of stuff that might not make sense. Like if there was a hemoglobin value that was off the charts and didn't make sense, um, I would just take that out and clean it up. But in general, um, it should be very close to the twist numbers for everything. So for the semi-annual measures, um, for we used to track low, normal, and high birth weight. And TWIST can show you if you still want to continue to track the low birth weight. I don't think um, it will show you the, the high birth weight. So for that, for most of these, you'll, for four, six, seven, and eight, I think we used to have a five. Um, you will use a nutrition risk criteria prevalence report. And basically, that is a really useful report because any risk that you want to look at um, and see how often that risk is assigned, um, you can use TWIST to do that. So this is just highlighting a few different risks, low birth weight, low hematocrit, low hemoglobin, at risk of overweight, which now is called overweight in general, and then overweight, which has a different more aligned with obesity now. So I'll show you where those are found. This nutrition risk report, again, you go to cl client processes and then output, choose reports, and it's the risk and diet, and you'll choose the nutrition risk criteria prevalence. And it will, it will show you all of those options alphabetically. So when you're choosing which risk, um, it won't give you the risk number. It will tell you that it will be alphabetical by the name of the risk. And then the last one that we were tracking with the performance measures was breastfeeding initiation. And there is a re twist report for initiation. It was broken for a few months and now it's fixed. So you can continue to use that and that is still under client processes, output, reports, nutrition education, breastfeeding, and then breastfeeding initiation. And similar to the other data, there, when I send out the yearly breastfeeding rates by agency, those are a little bit more polished and cleaned up, um, and the twist is kind of just the, you know, what is what is entered into twist, but like I'll do a, a little bit of extra cleaning, which doesn't change the rates very much, but it might take out those who said they, um, their breastfeeding duration was 
or their breastfeeding exclusivity was longer than their duration. So maybe they said they exclusively breastfed for six months, but they only breastfed for three months. So we don't really know what to do with that. So when we do the cleaned and polished version, we kind of take those out because we don't know which one to choose. Um, but they should be they should be pretty similar, especially for initiation. That's a pretty straightforward measure to calculate. All right, any questions about those twist reports? Um, and NCs are very helpful resources if you have more questions, or you can definitely email me about these um, if you are having trouble or not sure what you're seeing and want to make sense of it. And then I just included this, um, this slide. This has information that we shared at an earlier OICA about why we weren't why we decided not to continue with certain measures um, and what the results were from the coordinator survey when we asked coordinators, hey, what are you doing with this measure? So if you guys really were interested, I just included that as extra. All right. Well, I think that's all I have unless everyone, um, unless anyone has more questions. At the OWICA meeting, we're also going to have one of the innovator agents from a CCO come and talk to us because the performance measures are very tied to sort of the Medicaid world. Um, so that's an extra plug for OWICA. And I'm very excited to see you all there. All right. Well, I think you all have my email since I've emailed you multiple times with and without attachments. And um, yeah, I look forward to hearing, hearing more from you, questions, comments, or if you just want to kind of dig in a little bit and, and work with us more on these. And again, these were kind of created by local coordinators, so hopefully they will be very useful to you. And have a great day. Stay cool. Um, my house is really hot. Um, and... Happy birthday to my son on Thursday. All right. Thanks, everybody.